Yeah. So uh, as we uh, try to reestablish this draft, I I I'd say when we do get in, Cade, get rid of the assassins. I'm just so happy that the amount of maybes that we have in the game, that even even the players are like, you're gonna have a huge surprise. We're not even gonna show you the draft. We're gonna go into the game first, and then everyone will be just like, wow, maybe comedy. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. It's comedy. Oh, but there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna get straight into the game instantly here for the final game of the Group of Death here for Cade. They have the Esmeralda, Matilda, Yisun, Shin, Lunox, and Selena. For the side of Onyx PH, they've drafted for the Popo and Koopa. Rafaela now with the Farsa. Going in with the Amon in the jungle position and also Larsky using that Uranus. Oh! I... I'm surprised. Honestly, did not expect to see the Uranus out. And this was one hero I, I was hoping that will pull through, and that is the Esmeralda. But we must acknowledge as well, on the side of Cade right now, there is a comfort hero, a notorious hero on one of their star players, and that's Luis on his trademark, Luis Knox. Hmm. <laughs> Luis on his Lun Lunox. Yeah, right no, there. legit. Like, there are stories told of, of this Lunox in MPL Brazil where in... Teams would just ban it out straight up, like, don't give it to Luis. Well, we'll see what happens here. Let's see what he can do on that Lunox right now. As so far, he is able to actually farm up really, really well, but it's gonna be prime chunk. Really, really, it's half HP right there. Onik now still with the pressure in the early stages. This is what Amon wants to do as well. Using all the pressure from the, that the side lanes create to get a snowball going, to get maybe some kills. Different kind of aim on this time around from Onik mm -hmm. BH. We last saw them play this in the mid lane. Hatred shouting out our previous M2 champions in Brandy Sports. Now it's being played in the jungle. Dilarski gonna be in trouble. Yeah, Vlarski in a bit of a pickle right now, still able to get away. Now gets his ultimate, so the Consecration is ready. It's gonna be really hard to get a kill onto Vlarski, and that's exactly what he knows. He knows the power spike. He is already gonna go to cut the wave here with Amon also playing in that bottom side. It's gonna be extremely safe, but wait a minute. Onik, they're looking to push every single wave. Now with the bottom side camped already, it's gonna be the Feather Airstrike coming in. Prime forced to back away, and Amon has just been chunking that turtle down. So it's safe to say that the turtle will be taken uncontested for the side of the Onyx Philippine team. In another slew of uh, averting expectations, you would like to think Rensky I would build up the Filipino the team. But right now, it looks like Cade understands the dynamics. And I think a lot of that is on the back of Prime, who in his day was once a top global number one Selena player. So this is a very, very serious lineup that Cade brought. It is a serious lineup. They're not holding anything back right now. They are going to go for their comfort picks, for their favorite picks right here, because there's nothing to lose at this point. You win, you go to the upper brackets. You lose, it's, it's over. You go to the lower brackets. The chances, the double chance that you would have in the playoffs will be taken away from you. And that's the way they've been playing as well. They've been very proactive on the map, and that's where we're going to have to see. May, Mikey, Mikey oh. going in, instantly just taken down. Miscommunication coming, but it's going to be Luis actually jumping in with the order of the Krios. Still able to discharge some damage, but Kyrie jumps in back again to try to get a pick up. So far, one for zero for the side of Onyx PH. Too soon for Luis Didi to try that, but LaFell. Yeah, right now I'm looking at the drive from Onyx Philippines, and what they should really do is pressure the side lane. They have a Popo Kupa, they have a Rafaela, there's a lot of sustain there, but they also have the, the Farsa to really push everyone out of the way. So I want to see Onyx Philippines to be really aggressive on those lanes, especially when they have a, when we look at K, they have a lot of scaling heroes, they have the Esmeralda, they have the Yisin Shin, they have the Lunox. If Onyx Philippines doesn't put on the gas right now, if they don't turn on turbo, it could spell trouble. It could spell trouble, man. Oh, Abyssal Arrow is going to whiff right there. Prime using Abyssal Arrows, but it's going to be Kyrie rotating to the mid lane, trying to get a cheeky gang inside. Goes back invisible, and that's going to be Boloyski flickering in front with the Holy Baptism only connecting onto Mikey. It is the Roamer. So, so far, Cade are still, still okay. Kyrie just being such a nuisance here, using that invisibility, utilizing it perfectly in this game so far. Yep, he's able to use it to bully away the opposing jungler. So there is an interesting relationship here between Kyrie and King. 
Yes, King has the superior vision, but Kairi can bully him out. He can weave in and out of these traps set in by the Selena, set in by the Mountain Shocker. There is advanced vision on the side of Keed, but I, I guess Onyx Philippines, the reason why they're owning the map so much is because they're making their rotations count. And look at this switcheroo. Mark has already moved down to the bottom lane. He's already finished up with the Tier 1 up top, and Luis couldn't even answer back. Absolutely, Kyrie already now going in again. The setup is just really, really nice. Onyx Philippines with the banana split once again, splitting up the map, getting the pressure on that bottom side, and instantly just capitalizing on that. Further airstrike now comes in, only to poke the members from the side of Cade. And right now, for just one kill, they have been able to get a lot of gold. But actually, Kyrie jumps in, for some damage onto Takashi. Not going to be able to get that pick off just yet, as both teams are still playing it really, really passively, playing it for the objectives. Popo and Koopa has been chunking that bottom side turret. Love the call that Maloyski or whoever said, Marky, get out of there, there's four on the way, but he still fights back! Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not scared at all, man. That is what the Pop One Koopa is for here, Lapel, as the items have popped up. Yeah, right now we're looking at Marky. He is... I would say on the way towards that Blade of Despair is going to be a very big item because the damage coming from Bidem Koopa is going to be crazy. But Kyrie as well. He's already finished his Feather of Heaven. He's pretty okay to fight. But I'm really looking at, at Onyx Philippines right now at the bottom lane. This might be the time they want to turn up the speed. Takashi now caught in a bad situation. Still able to run away right now using the Purify to get away. But on the other side, Larsky is also caught in a little bit of a pickle but still has that Consecration, still has that Flicker. Onyx Philippines though, this is what they like to do. Blue the Banana Split is coming in once again here, getting the second tier turret in the sixth minute of the game. I was about to say, there's so much that Onyx PH is working with and one of the main proprietors, one of the main reasons why is because of the CEO, Delarski up top. He's always been trying to get the attention of Gates, and finally, they bite and they get something, but at what cost? I'm guessing mid lane turret here. Yeah, they're leaving the Selena in the mid lane. She doesn't have any wave clear whatsoever, and that's going to be Onyx Philippines taking the trade, going in for that mid lane turret. It surely is going to be much, much worth it. And there you go, another turret to set up for the next turtle. Onyx Philippines, they're just so good at splitting up the map, playing with the pressure, and setting up for objectives. This is Onyx at their best. Right now, looking at this game, there's not a lot of deaths, but there's a lot of activities going on. This shows the level of gameplay that they have. Very, very high gameplay. Not looking for kills, objectives. Oh, but wait a minute, Turtle, that's gonna be slain right there from the side of Kade. Able to run away for now, but Mikey's gonna get sniped by the Feather Airstrike. One for the price of the Turtle. Kade is able to finally get the first, not the second objective of the game. This is still home to these two teams. I, I honestly have seen a game where Cade was sitting at like 15 minutes and the score was 2-3. to three. Same I can say for Onyx Philippines, I may have casted that game as well, wherein they beat a team and the scoreline was at what, 16 minutes? Same, about 2-3. to three. So these two teams, they know this playstyle very well. They understand what it means to isolate certain members, get out of team fights with just the skin of your hair. And right now, that's what Mikey is doing for K, that Guiding Wind. That's what Boloisky is doing with that Rafaela using the Holy Healing. So this is exactly the nature of the beast. This is the kind of environment that these two teams have built for themselves using this draft. Yeah, Onyx, Onyx Philippines' draft right here, they're really good at actually picking off targets as well with the Amon and also just the far set of burst in, right? So oh. actually, the Yi and Shin coming in from Cade, really, really smart choice. Going in for the Mountain Shocker, opening up the map, but it's going to be the Abyssal Arrow actually connecting onto Marky. Look at that. It's going to be everyone following it up, but the stun comes in and the Feather Airstrike will be enough to take Louise down. Marky will be able to pick up the kill. It's going to be Mikey jumping in. The Falling Simon will be able to connect onto three, but there's no follow. -up. King has just joined the fight and that's three members taken now with nothing on the board for Cade. King joining the fight, that's the M2 logo. Today we are to the top and they just toppled one by one, three for none, all the way straight into tier two. Even tier two mid is in trouble now. So I'm surprised that Onyx BH did try to save up and get more resources in their jungle. But LaFell break down what happened here. This is what it looks like when you have a 3k gold lead. Look at the damage from the Farsa. Farsa is standing in behind, but more importantly, Marky with that Popol and Koopa. Once he has that Blade of Despair, the damage coming from both of that heroes. Again, Koopa is also a hero. Let's not forget about the beasts over there. They are very strong. The burst damage is very, very high. And on the Philippines, they have full control of the map. 
four turret lead right now for the side of Onyx Philippines. That will mean that they will have pressure on to both of the side lanes right now. Even the mid lane, they're going to win in pressure everywhere across the map. Only the two inhibitor turrets left in those side lanes. And there you have it. With the pressure, insane setup. There's nothing Cade can do. What they need to do right now is scale up. But do they have that much time? Can I just say how happy I am that Popol and Kupa is finally a marksman? He's being treated like the marksman that he indeed is. For the longest time in his pro career, this little boy and his wolf has been used as a tank or even a support hero. But now, in the hands of Marky, it's lethal. It is lethal again. Larsky, he gets engaged on, but he has the Consecration and the Flicker. It, it, it's, not even, uh, it's not even a threat to him at this point of the game. And that's, again, Blue Onyx Philippines just using their lead very intelligently, getting every single objective on the board. And notice this, they haven't even used the Lord. It's still marching down that top side. Now with the Feather Airstrike used up, it's going to be the Mountain Chakra Wrestle taking a little bit of health from the side of Hatred right now. So we'll see what happens here, because Farsa won't have the Feather Airstrike. Takashi goes in for the following time. We'll get stunned up by Marky right there as Abyssal Arrow will be able to connect but only onto the Roamer. The defense is very, very good for the side of Cade, but it buys them a little bit more time. But Onyx Philippines oh. just so good with the siege. They use everything oh. as a distraction to set up for more. And right now, as of this moment, 10 minute item check. Right now, the items are there, but I do have to say, this is the most interesting game of chess that I have ever seen. Both of these players are playing one or two steps ahead, especially Onyx Philippines. Absolutely, but there he goes. It's going to be another fight right now. It's going to be Takashi actually trying to look for a desperate engage. Instantly, Onyx Philippines, they know what they're here to do. They didn't want to overcommit into anything, and that was just Cade missing out on the engage. The fact is they don't need to overcommit. The only really one who's putting his nose where it doesn't belong is Delarski, the CEO. He's checking for what he might be able to invest in, and right now it looks like a team fight. It is a team fight, but the airstrike has been popped once again. It deals some damage onto the backside. It's going to be Onyx Philippines picking up first blood in this team fight, but we'll have to see what happens next. The turret will go down, and Onyx Philippines, they have the lead. They're going to go in all the way. And that's going to be the follow up damage coming in to silence Louise. And that is a 2 for 0 with the inhibitor turrets as well. Onyx Philippines are looking scary there, man. Currently, Delarski, the CEO, is investing in a hostile takeover. They are using tooth and nail everything they got, their whole kit to be able to take down turrets and heroes. And there's only three defenders left on the side of Kane. Through three defenders left from the side of Cade. Kyrie jumps in for some damage, able to get one more damn, but it is gonna be the base picked up. They are going to the upper brackets, Philippines. You have a representative. Again, both of the Filipino teams have made it qualified to the upper brackets. After this, we're gonna look at numbers because again, this is a chess match. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of kills, a lot of rotation is going on. And the thing is, we did talk about it. Onyx Philippines, they have to pick up the pace. They need to force K to follow their own way of play. And K looks like, we don't know what to do. 